Many people disagree with me with my lack of concern about methanol when I'm distilling. In this video, I'm going to go over the things that I consider to be myth and the things that I consider to be real concerns when it comes to methanol production during distillation. Let's get into it. So one of the most common beliefs in the moonshine community is that if you remove the first few ounces of your run, you are effectively removing the methanol from your distillate. I don't believe this is true, and I think science agrees with me. So in this video, I'm going to go over the information that I have found that changed my mind because I, too, used to believe that I needed to throw out the four shots, the very first part of that run, discard it so that I'm being a safe home distiller. I'm going to share all of my resources with you where I found the information so that you can go do the research yourself because that's important. You should not take my word for it or anyone else's. You should go look the information up yourself. Trust the people who know more about science than us. So before we can really make a decision about how dangerous is methanol to us home distillers, and what is the risk of us making someone go blind or worse? Now, I would think that before we can assess the risk of methanol, first we need to know a few facts. Primarily, how much methanol do I need to ingest to suffer serious consequences? And what would be a safe limit? Because we can't exclude methanol from things like wine or beer. And we can't really exclude it from our liquor either. And we'll get into that a little bit later in the video. Now, one source that I found that seemed to be in agreement with most other sources about what the dangerous dose is, is the National Library of Medicine. It's a government website, and I'll share some links with you here in a minute. But they say that the dangerous dose where blindness can begin to occur is 30 milliliters of methanol. That's about one ounce. Now, when you think about that, one ounce doesn't seem like that much. But as it turns out, and as I'll show later in the video, extracting that 30 milliliters from your run is very difficult. Now that we have this benchmark of 30 milliliters, we need to have an understanding of how methanol is produced. So methanol is produced during fermentation in the presence of pectin. So some of the ingredients we use have higher amounts of pectin than others. Fruit having the most pectin. So your wines and your brandies are going to produce more methanol than your grains or your whiskeys. In a wash where you're using regular old table sugar like cane sugar, met, there's nearly no methanol produced. So we don't even really have to worry about it all if you're talking about just a straight sugar wash. And now that we know that fruit washes create the most potential, we're just going to focus on those. So how much methanol is produced during a fruit mash? Now, the NLM website states that the average fruit fermentation produces about 250 grams of methanol per liter. Now, we convert that to gallons and we've got 800 and something, I'm not sure the number, 800 plus milligrams of methanol per gallon. Now, how does that convert to milliliters? That equals approximately 1.1 milliliters of methanol from a gallon mash. So if 30 milliliters is the dangerous number, we have to do a mash that's about 27 gallons. And if we're talking about a grain fermentation, that produces about 300 milligrams per gallon, which comes out to about 0.38 milliliters of methanol. This means we would have to be running a 76-gallon batch to produce that magic number of 30 milliliters. Now, why is it that people believe that if we extract the first few ounces of a run and discard it, we've effectively removed the danger of methanol? It's because the methanol boiling point is roughly 147 degrees Fahrenheit, which is much lower than the 173 degrees Fahrenheit of ethanol. So you logically think that methanol is going to boil off before ethanol. So it's going to come out at the beginning of the run. 
What this doesn't take into consideration is the fact that those boiling points are pure built boiling points. So that's pure ethanol. But we are not ever distilling pure ethanol. We're distilling mostly water. And what happens when ethanol and water are in the same pot and heating up? Something called hydrogen bonding happens. Now, I'm not the scientist, so I have a rough understanding of the hydrogen bonding process. So it's basically when two molecules, uh, when molecules with a positive charge attract molecules with a negative charge, the methanol has one of the other, positive or negative, and the, and the water molecule has one or the other. And so they're, they create a bond, and this bond is strong enough to not let the ethanol boil off at 147 degrees. And because of another thing called isotropes that are formed, methanol does not form an isotrope, and ethanol does. And so it changes the boiling points at which ethanol and methanol are released. Now, I'm going to put a link up here to a video where I learned most of this information, and it's for Alan at um, Still Behind the Bench. He does an excellent job of describing this science in layman's terms so that it's easy to understand, draws pictures and everything. It's a great video. I'm going to put a card up here for it right there because I think it's probably the best video explanation of this process. And in this video, he describes why the methanol does not come out at the beginning. In fact, he breaks it down into pot stills and column stills. And if you're using a pot still, like the one I have behind me, most of your methanol is coming out in the tails. Now, I've heard many arguments about uh, that, that statement, most of the methanol is coming out in the tails, has to do either by volume, by percentage, or by ratio. And I've dug around in all kinds of information to try and understand it. And to be honest, I haven't got it all. But either way, the tails are smeared across the entire run. They can be concentrated in one portion of the run or another. So when you say the, tail, the, the methanol is coming out mostly in the tails, that doesn't mean the last jar of the run. And when you say the methanol is coming out mostly in the heads, like, when the, like in the case of a column still where you have bubble plates or a column still where you, you're using a deflagmator and compressing the heads, and you can say then that, yes, most of the methanol comes out during the heads. But that is not to say that the methanol comes out in the beginning at the first bit of the run. The heads account for 20 to 30 percent of the runs. So it can be a number of jars in the run that it's smeared across all of those jars. You're still not getting all of the methanol out simply by holding off the first few ounces of the run. Now, another thing we need to talk about is the dangers of consuming methanol are not directly attributed to the methanol. The dangers of methanol are directly related to the metabolization of methanol. An enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase converts the methanol into formaldehyde. That is the dangerous component. That byproduct and folic, uh, folic acid are what cause the problems. Now, here's the interesting thing about this enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase. It prefers ethanol over methanol. So if both methanol and ethanol are present, it is going to metabolize the ethanol first. So when we're drinking shine that might have a little bit of methanol in it, it's not metabolizing that methanol. It's, it's metabolizing the ethanol first, which gives our bodies time to pass that methanol through the system without being metabolized. Yes, our body will metabolize some of that methanol and it will give us a headache and other uh, symptoms similar to ethanol like dizziness and blur, uh, slurred speech, but those are not fatal doses and the effects go away, not causing long-term damage. Let's also take into consideration a, a statistic from the NLM website. The most common instance of methanol poisoning does not come from drinking alcohol like distilled spirits. 
It comes from drinking windshield washer fluid. Now, how many people do you know that drink windshield washer fluid? How many people do you know that drink moonshine? It would seem that if moonshine was really as big of a problem, the most common instances of methanol poisoning would not be from windshield washer fluid. And I didn't just make that up. I'll share the links. Now, because of all of that information I just shared with you, I have no concerns about methanol anymore. I used to, and I used to toss out the four shots thinking I was eliminating the methanol from my run, but I've changed my mind about that. Now, when I say I'm not concerned about methanol, that does not to say that I'm drinking the heads, because I'm not. I'm setting the heads aside and not including them in my final product, or at least not most of them. But I'm not doing it because there might be methanol there. I'm doing it because there's lots of things in the heads that are terrible to taste, and I don't want it in my final product. Now, there are a couple of things you can do to reduce the amount of methanol in your fermentation to begin with, and thus lowering the amount of ethanol that's in your still when you do your distillation. A study found that if you use pectic enzymes in your fruit, dis in your fruit fermentations, that that can reduce the amount of methanol produced between 40 and 70 percent. So roughly cut it in half simply by using pectic enzymes. It has also been found that methanol is still being produced after fermentation is complete. They've even found that in wine bottles, methanol is still being produced after the wine has been bottled. So if you want to reduce the amount of methanol in your distillation, be sure to distill your product quickly after fermentation is complete. And it's also a common myth that you can do what's called a blue flame test, where you take a little bit of your product, you pour it on a spoon or a saucer or something, and light it on fire. And if it, if it burns without a yellow flame, that you have eliminated your, um, your bad products like methanol. This is not true. A purely blue flame doesn't really mean that much when it comes to methanol because methanol also burns blue. Now, I told you I would share the links for where I found all the information that changed my mind. So I've written an article on my website with roughly the same information as this video, but within that article, I've shared hyperlinks directly to the sites like the National Library of Medicine and things like that where I found the information. I'll put that, I'll put a link to that article up here in the top somewhere, and I suggest you go check it out so that you can see those links, so that you can do the research on your own. Don't take my word for it. Don't take anyone else's word for it. Go search out the information and make your own decision. That's all you can really do. I hope you found this information useful, and I will see you on the next one.